Hello there. This video today is about the truth. I'm quite amazed how many Christians either don't know the truth or they're not interested in keeping the truth. But there are many. And you'll see why when I give an explanation from the Word of God exactly what the truth is. But before I go in and explain it, there are two scriptures I want to read to you first. And the first one is John 18, verse 38. And this is Jesus before Pilate, just before he was crucified. And this is what Pilate said to him. Pilate says to him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and says to them, I find no fault in him. Now, this is a very important question, isn't it? What is truth? And I'm hoping I'm going to do it and answer that question now. The other scripture I want to look at is Romans 2 verse 2. And this will explain to you why it is important to know the truth. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who commit such things. Well, this is the reason why we want to know what the truth is. Because the judgment of God on us is going to be according to truth, the same as it is on those people that he was speaking about. It's all according to truth. So it's important that we get this message. Know what the truth is and know how you are going to be judged. Now in this study we're going to be dealing with two words. One in the Greek, which is aletheia, meaning truth. Strong's number is 225. And the other one is the Hebrew word emet, meaning true or truth. And it's Strong's number 571. So let's make a start and let's go and see exactly what this truth is. And the first scripture I'm going to give you is Nehemiah 9 verse 13. You came down also upon Mount Sinai and spoke with them from heaven and gave them right judgments and true laws, good statutes and commandments true laws. So that's indicating that the laws that God gave on Mount Sinai, they were all truth. The next one is Psalm 119 verse 142. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and your law is the truth. Now we've got the answer to the first one, haven't we? God's law is truth. And this is something that many modern day Christians have rejected. Since I've been a Christian and I've searched these things out from the word of God, I find it difficult to understand why people would throw away God's law. God's law is truth. And if you are not obeying God's law, you're not obeying the truth. Malachi 2.6 is the next one. The law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity, and turned many away from iniquity. This was speaking about Levi, the third son of Jacob, who became the head of the tribe of Levi. That's where his name from. And this was the man to whom God designated the priesthood. And this is the reason why you can see from what it says about him. I'll give you one more, and this is in the New Testament, and it is Romans chapter 2, verse 20. An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of infants, who have the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. So, make no mistake, God's law is the truth. And if you reject that, you've rejected the truth. The next one's going to help and confirm it. 
because this is all God's commandments are truth. Psalm 119 verse 151 You are near, O Yahweh, and all your commandments are truth. Well, all God's commandments are truth. Not only the Ten Commandments that he gave from Sinai, but all his commandments are truth according to this. Because as we'll see, it's all the word of God. You throw away any one of those commandments, and James 2.10 says, if you keep the whole law and offend in one place, you are guilty of all. That will make you a lawless person. So ask yourself the question, if I'm not keeping all of the Ten Commandments, how's God going to judge me on the day? It's going to be according to his word, isn't it? The next one we can look at is God's word is truth. Psalm 119, verse 43. Do not take the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in your judgments. Well, the word of truth, we know what that is, don't we? It's his commandments and it's his law. Psalm 119, verse 160. Your word is truth from the beginning, and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. Well, look at that. God's word is truth from the beginning. If you go against God's word, you go against the truth. And it's not going to change. Daniel 10, 21. But I will show you that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none who holds with me in these things but Michael, your prince. Now this is an angel, a messenger angel, speaking to Daniel after he did a 21-day fast, asking for the understanding of a vision. And the angel eventually got through. He was prevented in the heavens initially, but Michael the archangel came to set him free, and he's telling him the scripture of truth was what he came to tell Daniel. The next one is in the New Testament, and it's one that everybody should remember. It's John 17, verse 17. Sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. This is Jesus Christ praying to his Father before his crucifixion, and he's praying for his disciples. That means he's praying for us. He wants us sanctified through the truth. Obviously, We've got to comply with it. We've got to agree to it. We've got to allow it to happen. But this is what he's trying to do with every one of us. He's trying to sanctify us. Sanctify means to set apart. Set apart for him. That's what sanctification is. It's sanctification of the heart and the spirit. It is not the sanctification of the Old Testament, which was all about physical cleansing. This is about spiritual cleansing in the New Testament. Second Timothy 2.15 Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a workman who is not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Well, that's what we should be doing, studying the word of God, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, I've done a video about how to do that. And I'll link to it in this video. But we've done three things now, haven't we? This is what the truth is. It's God's law. It's all of God's commandments. And it's God's word. So if you reject that, you have rejected the truth. And the next one we're going to look at is very simple. It's Jesus Christ. John 1, 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. 
Well, we just read the law was truth, and that was given by Moses. But this says grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. They didn't really have the grace in the Old Testament, did they? But Jesus came to demonstrate to us by his grace how we could fulfill the law. It tells you this in Romans 8, 4. The reason why Jesus Christ was crucified on a cross, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. And he's talking to a Gentile church. That's us, isn't it? John 14, 6. Jesus says to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus was the truth incarnate. He was the word of God, as we've seen, that is truth. He was the word, the walking word of God. He had the law in his heart. He had all the commandments in his heart, according to uh, Psalm 40, verse 8. This is how he managed to do all the things that he did. This is what we should be like if we're going to be like Jesus. Get the law, the commandments, God's word into your heart. Ephesians 4.24 And to put on the new man who is being created by God in righteousness and holiness of the truth. Well, this is the new man who's being created in us if we are following on to try and be obedient to the word of God. And this new man, when self dies, the new man takes over. And that new man is Jesus Christ. That's the one who is the truth. So he's be being created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. The Spirit of Christ is being built up in us more and more as we continue to study the Word of God and get more of the truth in us. Now, the fifth one I want to show you is that the Holy Spirit is the truth. So, go to John chapter 14, verse 17, and we'll read a verse there. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him nor know him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. Well, the Holy Spirit was in Jesus Christ. It was dwelling with the disciples at that time, but they had not received the gift of the Holy Spirit as yet, uh, but it was going to be given to them on the day of Pentecost. So, the spirit of truth, that's what's mentioned there. John fifteen twenty six, But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. Well, this is Jesus making the promise again. They're going to receive the spirit of truth. John sixteen thirteen. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. Well, the Spirit of truth will guide you into all truth if you seek for it. That's the point. Jesus said, he who seeks finds. I find a lot of Christians these days, they're not seeking for the truth simply because they believe they've already got it. You've got to be humble enough to admit, I may, may not have the truth, I better start looking and make sure and start checking some things. This is what I did when I came across teaching where people told me about Sabbath day and things like that. Sabbath day is truth, isn't it? All God's commandments are truth. But I didn't believe it for the first five or six years of my Christian walk because I went to a Sunday keeping church and nobody ever taught it there. If you're in the same position, my friend, I would encourage you, search it out, because all God's commandments are truth. 
1 John 5, 6. This is the last one I'm going to give you for this. This is he who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that bears witness, because the Spirit is truth. There you are. The Spirit is truth. The Spirit itself is truth, and therefore it can only speak truth to us. There's one more I want to give you, and I'm going to give you some scriptures for this, and this is God's works are truth. Psalm 111, verse 7. The works of his hands are truth and judgment. All his commandments are sure. Well, that's talking about God and everything he does, their works of truth. Daniel 4.37. This is an interesting one. This is spoken by Nebuchadnezzar after he had been punished by God for his pride, walking through his palace and saying, all these things I've got by my own power. That's what God hates. He resists the proud, gives grace to the humble. And he ended up eating grass for seven years, didn't he? That's what the scripture teaches, basically. He calls it seven times, but I believe it was seven years. He got down and ate grass like an animal. This was the way God humbled the man. Oh dear, better not to be proud, isn't it? But this is what he says when he comes back to his senses and gets the revelation of who God is. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth, and his ways judgment, and those who walk in pride he is able to abase. Now that's simple, isn't it? All his works are truth. So whatever God does, it's true. Now there isn't a direct scripture that says God is truth, but I would add this one, as a, as a number seven. The Holy Spirit, if you believe that is God, and obviously it is because God is a spirit and he's holy. So the Holy Spirit is God. And if you believe the word is God from John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. You believe the word is God and the word is truth, then God must be truth. It's as simple as that. So, we'll give you now a quick overview of what we've gone through, and this is what the truth is. God's law, God's commandments, God's word, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, God's works, and God himself. Now, I'll give you one final warning. If you reject this truth, let me tell you, you're going to be judged according to this. John twelve forty eight. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same will judge him in the last day. Everything Jesus said was truth. And that is going to judge you. And he said in, John, in Matthew 19, if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. And this is what the vast majority of Christians are sadly not doing. Please, search it out for yourself. Humble yourself enough to do it. There's plenty of evidence out there we should be keeping all Ten Commandments today. Not only in a literal sense, but in a spiritual sense as well. So I hope you've got something out of this video. And if you did, I'm blessed. And I hope you are as well. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Click center to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click top right to see more videos. Go also to our website and see some great Bible studies, Hebrew and Greek word studies, and lots more. And God bless you.